And um, so we make sure we have it. Cause I know there are a couple of people who said, oh, I can't make it, will you please record it? So I'll, I'll make sure you all get the recording and we'll have time for questions and answers as well. So Jason, take it, take it. On. Thank you, thank you. I just want to do a mic check really quick. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am in the great outdoors. And as I said before, this behind me is not uh, uh, one of those backdrops that Lynn's using. And then uh, if you want to look <laughs> over there uh, through, the, through the corner, you can see the mountains, which are the Wallawas. If you've never been out to Eastern Oregon, it is uh, stunning. So, wow. but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about something that I believe is really important that most people aren't talking about, and that is social media and the addictive side of it. Um, how can we start to use social media in our business in a way that is not taking us out and we can actually maximize our business growth rather than kind of FOMO and looking what our competitors are doing and saying, why do they have it so good? And all those things that come up. And so I built a little PowerPoint today to uh, just help us all figure out what are the best strategies for us to use social media so it's not using us. Now, I, I just want to um, just do some open-ended before I even do my introduction and put on the PowerPoint. What social media are you guys on? Let's just hear some of the platforms you spend most of your time on. But Facebook. not all at once, not all at once. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, yeah. mostly. Okay, and Facebook LinkedIn. and Instagram, LinkedIn. Twitter, I just got an invitation to Liker, but I haven't tried it yet. I don't know anything about it. Liker. Yeah. Okay. Liker. Hmm. Anybody trying to compete with their son or daughter and you're on TikTok? No. <laughs> all right. YouTube, anybody spending a lot of time with uh, YouTube and have a YouTube channel? I do, but... Uh, no, I like I post these on YouTube. <laughs> I don't have I a channel. I have do a like channel. YouTube a lot. I look at things on YouTube, so mm -hmm. uh, search broadcast from it, and we watch movies on it. Okay, okay. So let me open this up. I'm going to share my screen. And that is not the beginning. So let me go through real quick. You get to see it backwards. I hope I don't make anyone dizzy. <laughs> so <clears throat> social media, how to use it without it using you. We're going to talk a lot about uh, the big companies. They're, they're billion dollar companies in a very short amount of time. And when you have billions of dollars, what you do is you invest in market share and you try to grow that. And what that means is if you're for forces of good, that's great. And if you're for forces of evil, it may be that your ethics start to wane a little bit and you're wanting more users, more users to spend more time. Um, curious, anyone on the call, uh, The Social Dilemma, the documentary on Netflix right now, has anyone seen it? No. Okay, great, great documentary with a lot of uh, kind of talking points about uh, the negative uh, side of social media. Again, it's one of the addictions that's socially acceptable. Like if people drank as much as we're on social media these days, people, our whole family would have an intervention. But if you're on your phone at meals, if you're on your phone in the evening in bed, no one kind of walks up and says, oh, Sally, we got to have an intervention for Sally. <laughs> like, oh no, like I got one phone on that side of the bed and the other phone on this side of the bed. So Let's talk about this because I think it's costing us more than we think. If you haven't heard me present be before and I'll, I'll lift this up so you can see my face a little bit. Um, my name is Jason. I started my career as an acupuncturist. Uh, right away, I was given the opportunity to work in a hospital. Uh, I found that all of my patients were getting sick from the place they spend most of their time, which is in their workplace. And I'm a third generation entrepreneur. So my grandfather was an entrepreneur. My father was an entrepreneur. And they taught me very early on lemonade stands to start with. And then how do you buy suckers at Costco? Used to be called Sam's Club or something else when I was a, a kid. And, and how do you buy the big bag and then go sell them at school? So 
I learned uh, a lot of different things about running a till, cash, profit, what's it about? And then I got online in the late 90s and I started studying what, what's it like to run business online. And so over the last two decades, what I've found is people are really hoping and yearning to find that business gold mine online. And most people are spending way too much time online and it's hurting your soul. It's really taking away from livelihood of connection. And I mean that even with COVID, I'm a big fan of diversifying your business and having part of your business online. But there are people that are spending way too much time attached to their cell phone. So with that, every year, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of them are spending more and more money to figure out how you stay on there longer and longer and longer. So you're going up against the best psychologist and behavioralist in the world to try to gain your attention. Now, I'm a fan of thinking, how do we know they're trying to take our attention, but become a renegade and do it in a way that works for you? How do you break free to get your freedom back, but still use all the free services so that it can work for you? And I'm gonna talk about some tools and tricks that I use and that my clients use. And then I wanna talk with you about putting some of this in place because one, I appreciate Becky, you having me here today, Lynn co-hosting. And I also appreciate you guys taking time to have one more Zoom call because I know that you're probably getting Zoomed out and you're like, <laughs> I'm not sure I can take one more of these. So. Thank you for being here today. I think it's really important to know that social media for most accounts is free and it's free because it's your attention and the data, which is the paid product. So that means for the first time in history ever, you're the product, your attention span is the product. So it's great that we have Google, we have Facebook, we have billion YouTube videos and more coming every day that we can use all of those services for free. And the challenge is the commodity is your attention span. And every data point will say the longer you're on social media, the less attention span you have, the less you're able to focus. And if there's one thing I know about business success, you have to get your focus in place. We take a look at one of the bigger companies, Axiom, and they provide up to 3,000 attributes and scores on who you are. That means every time you're using your phone, we just click those big long legal agreements because we never wanna read 40 pages or 150 pages about what we're actually saying. And these companies are, are collecting all sorts of data points. Now, we look at this and, and like, are you planning to have a baby? Do you rent or do you own? What religion are you? Who do you talk to the most? What do you actually like and what don't you like? What do you actually comment on and what you don't comment on? How much is your net worth? Th th these companies know all of this because of your social media usage. Now, because of that, they then sell it and they sell it to different companies who then are gonna market to you. And now imagine for a moment, you've given up all your freedoms and they know you better than you know yourself. So they know what to offer you and when because they're manipulating you to make a purchase. They might even know how many times to reach out to you for you to say yes. Now the amount of data points becomes minutia and the predictability of data, there are outliers, but when you have that many data points on an individual, you can start to predict their behavior. We might think that we have total freedom and we're so unique and we do all these things differently all the time. But if you are online for five, six hours a day and someone's watching every move you make, they know you well. And I think it's really important to start to wake up that you aren't being watched every time you're online. 
Now, in addition, Becky, you still there? I want to make sure faces are moving. Yeah. Great. So in addition to them watching you, there are new things coming into play on AI. And AI is artificial intelligence. And so it means that we're giving up more and more of our freedoms. The longer we use social media, the more freedom we give up. I'm curious, there are some tech people on the call. Does anyone use a VPN? So you can mask your IP address. Oh. And you can start to protect your data even more. That's not what this talk is about. But if you're online a lot, I recommend you start to see how can I have more data privacy. Now, the other thing that they're also watching is it never goes away. They store all those files. Isn't it weird when someone runs for government that a file from like 10, 15 years ago comes up? And it no longer is about forgiveness or learning or I made a stupid mistake. Data could pull up from a video you made five years ago when you were having a hard time. <coughs> now, I'm not saying don't use video. What I'm saying is we have to get smarter in what we're doing online. And we have to start to use social media less because word of mouth and old school business tactics still work. We take a look at the uh, addictiveness and, and science is already there. We don't talk about the people that are studying this enough, but there's correlative data. Like there's a big difference between causation and correlation. Like no one wants to say social media causes anxiety. I believe it does, but it's correlated with, with that meaning it's associated with. If you're using social media too much, there's a likelihood that you're feeling more depressed, you're feeling more isolated, you're feeling more anxious, and you can have extreme stress. Now, what I know, because I also teach about mindfulness, the more stressed you are, the harder it is on your health, the more your business can suffer. Those are related one to one to one. Can I ask a question, Jason? Yeah. Is that Axiom file editable by us at all? Uh, you can start to uh, do things on Facebook. To, there's toggles that you need to do to protect more of your data. But, okay. but there's so many things that we're doing nowadays. With, we're, we listen to music on iTunes. You know, we uh, watch YouTube videos. Oh, okay. That They're collecting so, enough so data. I, I wanna, uh, under the web, e Parker website, I want to come okay. up with the, the calculator. Or, or was that on? Tell Jeannie's interrupting. Stately. Yeah, I know. I'm all right, thank you for muting them. All right, so I wanna just cover this timeline and um, I wanna make sure that I answered the question to the best of my ability. The person that asked the question, can you state your name? Uh, that's Dottie, yes it did, thank you. Okay, great. So I, I got my first Dell computer in the late 90s and by 2007, um, AOL came around and actually AOL, I believe this is wrong because AOL, I had it in the late 90s. So this is incorrect data right here. But we all, if we're old enough, we remember it plugged into the telephone wire, you got a big And then we waited like three to five minutes for a landing page to load. And now if we have to wait like I don't know, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, we're frustrated. Our attention span has kind of become nano. Now the big boom, and this is correct, 2003 to 2006, we get the big four, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and those are in order. So LinkedIn came first and then Facebook, YouTube, and then Twitter. Now the amazing thing to me is we take a quantum leap by 2010 and we have Instagram. Now, I don't know the last hundred years, but it's very unlikely for a company in 10 years from 2010 to 2020 to be worth $100 billion. Now, why is a company that's free worth so much? Any guesses? Advertising. Advertising. Yep. 
now part of it, half of it is advertising. What's the other part? What are the advertisers paying for? The data. data that your they're data. Getting. They're paying for your data. If you do a lot with Instagram ads or Facebook ads, you can get down to the minutia of what people like and they don't like. What demographics, what psychographics, what are their core values? And for us little guy, that's really helpful. But for the companies that are spending millions of dollars, it becomes really manipulative. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mark Weinstein, but he came around 2012. MeWe is a social platform that's very similar to Facebook about 10 years ago. And so uh, the difference is they, they don't sell your data at all. You have 100% privacy. Now, there's 10 million users and I've tried to do things over on MeWe and I get frustrated because I'm so used to being catered by Facebook. And when you have $100 billion worth of, of assets, you can easily pay programmers all the time to tweak it and make it better and better and better. Now they're making it better on twofold. One, they're making it better on usability, but two, they're studying me to know what I want. Yeah. So they're <laughs> offering me things I already want and that's not happening on Mealy. Now in 2019, uh, there's a study that came out in the journal of uh, social and clinical psychology. And it suggests that 30 minutes or less is what you need to have no negative impact that social yeah. media is causing you. Now, my guess, I could be incorrect about that, but everyone on this call uses social media every day, 30 minutes or more. Yeah. So let's get into the good, the bad, the ugly. I use social media all the time to recruit and retain new, new clients. I, I really like it. I, I have clients, I remember one story, I'm working with a client and she's in the back of a cab doing FaceTime with me in, in Mumbai. Oh, wow. That's That's cool. the kind of access you have in the global economy because of social media. Now you have quick access to information and you can do really good market research. It's easy to use, free marketing tools. You also have involvement with civic and community activities so you can really learn more about politics. You can learn more about um, the activities that are going on locally. Uh, I can't tell you the amount of money I've saved. I have four kids and I must have had $2,000 worth of buy nothing clothes and toys and other stuff that I've, I've received and I've also given. Um, knowing what your client had for lunch, I put on the good just to make sure you guys are still awake. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're tracking with me in the conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about the bad. Really important information. Yeah. <laughs> Online versus reality. Um, so there's a lot of false information right now. And it's hard to weed through when you're reading a story. Who wrote the story? Is it good journalism? Does it have valid points that was research? Is there credibility to it? Um, FOMO is fear of missing out. Uh, really, it is super addictive. So I know that when I get a like or a comment, I want to check to see if I got more likes or more comments. What did they say? Did they like me? If they didn't like me, should I respond? Like there's just all sorts of bad in the sense of the amount of time and attention of, am I a good person? Do people like me? Now, I also think the bad is diminished returns of effort on business. If you're spending a lot of time, like if, if you spent six hours in word of mouth and like client appreciation programs a day, you're going to have a, a million dollar business. Yeah, really. <laughs> but if you're spending six hours on social media and you end up looking at kitties in like Turkey, like that might not really get the ROI that you're looking for. Yeah. Now let's talk about the ugly. Censorship. Um, because I'm a wellness renegade, a lot of my clients are homeopaths, they're acupuncturists, they're naturopaths, and sometimes they're vaccine free. And there are... Uh, clients of mine that end up in Instagram or Facebook jail. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client that uh, she talks, she's written a book about menstruation cycles and she talks about her period a lot and Facebook didn't like that and they censored her. 
for talking about something that, it, that every woman goes through in their life, right? So cyberbullying your business, like how much do we hate when someone gets on and they give us a one-star review and either they never even came in or we cleaned it up with them and they still wanted to, to make the pain because of their access and authority to be an expert about your business online. As I mentioned before, there's also this cancer culture. Um, there is association with severe anxiety and depression, the isolation and extreme loneliness. I don't know if you've seen the movie Her, but I, I, I just get like, there are people that are having online conversations with people that are pretending to be someone they're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's all sorts of really ugliness. There's also suicide. The suicide rate, I think it's up 300%. So part of that is because COVID, but part of it is also because of people spending more and more of their time online. Now, the one thing I didn't name in the ugly, the civic activities is, is a really good thing to get involved, but uh, if you remember, I think it was 1998 Tiananmen Square, uh, that really happened where students protested the, the Chinese government and China has now censored it entirely in all the Chinese internet and it's not even in the history books that it happened. So there are young Chinese that don't know that Tiananmen Square even occurred because of censorship. And to me, that's ugly. That's revisionist history. Now, <clears throat> I wanna talk about five strategies to minimize. And before we do, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna open you guys up. And I just need to see some faces for a second. Sorry, there we go. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Good. Okay, Good. I'm gonna keep going with the presentation, but Zoom's a weird, weird beast where I'm talking and I can feel your energy, yeah. but I can't see yeah. faces, right? Yeah. <laughs> see if we're still there. <laughs> I wanna make sure you're still there and I wanna get my finger on the pulse. Does anybody have yeah. any questions before we move forward? All right. So we're, we're talking about minimizing. I'm gonna minimize you guys over in this corner here. So the number one thing that I see that, that really makes me itchy is when I'm out to eat and people are on their phone having a meal. And because I come from a healthcare background, I know how much uh, and how important nutrition is for the body to be healthy and you wanna be a healthy entrepreneur because if you don't feel good, it's harder to grow your business. And I remember this is three years ago, I was in London and I went to the Tate Museum and most museums in London have a cafe and it's one of the most affordable place you can get lunch. And I looked up and I realized I was in an entire cafe with not one single person on their phone and that there was a wait list to get in to the cafe. Oh, wow. Wow. And so culturally, uh, the U.S. is the worst with phone usage and with having it everywhere and with eating with it. So what I recommend is a very simple tip is when you eat, put it on the other counter and put it on silence so you're not gonna hear it go off and wanna grab it because you are like a Pavlov dog right now. You hear that ding and you're like, what, what, what was that? Did someone like me? Someone comment? Does someone need me? What do I need? <laughs> yeah. So um, away from meals and it, 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 the ex there is an exception. If you're a nutritionist or if you're a dietitian or you do something with food, take a picture of the food and then put the phone away. Like you can use yeah. it if it's part of your business, but don't keep it there for the entire meal. I also recommend like if you have family and there are families now, especially with big 
TVs, they're mirroring their phone to the TV and they're eating together during COVID. Don't do it every night. But give yourself a break from having technology be around your food. Second tip, time limits. Now I use an iPhone and iPhone has settings for social media where you can give yourself a time limit. What I don't like about their settings is there's an override button. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> do you want 15 more minutes? Do you want one more hour? Do you want to okay. ignore it? That's what it actually says. <laughs> That's do you funny. want 15 more minutes? Do you want another hour? Or do you want to ignore, right? How easy is it to just be like, oh, I definitely want to ignore this because I'm in the middle of looking at this cat and turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> I use the Freedom app. I like the Freedom app because it, it syncs to both your, your laptop and your phone. And mm. once you put in how long it's on for, you cannot hack it. There might be a time where you're like, oh, I forgot to do that thing on social media. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, crap. But then you just got to wait. And you're going to notice something if you take me up on this. You're going to notice how automated you are to grab social media. You'll even forget that you turned it on and you'll go to Facebook and it'll just be like, you know, it comes up that you can't get in. That's funny. So it's Freedom App. Freedom App. Yeah. I highly recommend it. How, how long does it keep you out? As long as you want. So you pre-do it. Oh. Yeah. You tell it how long it keeps you out. That's funny. Yeah. If you want to do a whole day, I bet you're going to start to get itchy and be like, oh my, I got to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> like it's the end by- of the world. And, and this is real. We, we laugh about it, but they've designed it that way. But there's no way to override it. There's no way to override it. And it's a really healthy thing to use because there's no way to override it. Uh. You can start by blocking (laughs) yourself for five minutes an hour. Yeah. 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 Start small. Yeah. All right. Oftentimes we use social media because we're bored. And so I'm a big fan of making plans. Make plans with your friends, your family, your clients, like, you know, my parents are older, so um, they're, they're quarantined. Uh, and so I, I Zoom them. They're in another state. We usually see each other four times a year. But right now, it doesn't mean make plans only outside with real people, although that is a healthy thing to do. Just make some plans other than being on social media. Now, I'm a big fan of social distance walks. Like you can put on a mask if if that's your thing and you can be six feet apart. And I think that if you just do one, you'll be like, wow, I I really like that. It may be that you want to do social distance walk with clients. Like your clients are starving for some face-to-face time with anyone right now. Yeah. And so offering them a review on their account or whatever it is that you do in person, socially distanced, masked up, they might really appreciate that. And then you can let them know this is, this is a service I offer. Uh, I use a social media management tool called Social Bee. Uh, this is like um, later.com, Hootsuite, oh, there are okay. many of them. And part of the problem is it was like Facebook was fine, but then came the rest and uh, You know, if you're using your business and you're posting to Twitter and and you're posting to LinkedIn and you're posting to YouTube and you're posting to Facebook and you're posting to Instagram, you're going to be exhausted at the end of the day. You're spending way too much time on your marketing. Uh, One of the things I really like Social B is you can do repetitive posts in groups on Facebook. And I have a Facebook closed group for my clients. And so it allows you, like I do something Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you can just do it once. And those reminders come out regularly. So really taking that AI that I was talking about and taking technology and making it work for you. For some, this is like, of course, a screen free day. And I challenge you. Like, I know there are people on this call that haven't had a screen-free day for six months. I know that that's true. 
And what's a screen-free day? It means your phone. It means your laptop. It means your iPhone watch. It means your all of it. Take a tech-free day and go out to the coast or go for a hike or just stay in your house and read a book. Put on a fire. It, it's the simplest things that make the biggest difference. And the simplest things are the hardest to do. So I want to come back in here. I'm going to stop here. The one slide I didn't have that I highly recommend is start tracking your usage. You might think I only use social media like two hours a day. And all of a sudden you realize it's three, four times that. If you add up what you're doing on your laptop, what you're doing on your phone, and so you can do it with a simple Excel spreadsheet. You can just put the social media channels you're on. Um, if you're on an iPhone, it already tracks most of it for you. I don't know enough about Google or Samsung phones. Anybody here know, does it track on your Google or Samsung? Or Pixel or any of those? Is everyone yeah, here you on can, an there's iPhone? there's a setting you can do it. Yeah, is yeah, that Yvonne? Um, yeah. There's a setting and you can do it. You so can. my recommendation is it is an automatic like my Audi, <laughs> but the Samsung I have to I have to set it. Yeah, of course you do. If it was automatic, you'd notice how long you were on there and you'd be on there less. And Samsung has a deal with all of those companies. <laughs> right? This is really about taking back freedom. It really is. Now <clears throat> on the iPhone, it does it and and uh, it's embarrassing. Like when I was looking at my social media uh, a while ago, I was doing like four and a half, five hours a day because I was going to bed and I was listening to a podcast and I was on Facebook way too much, way more than I wanna share with you guys right now. And it was a very humbling and shameful for me experience because I'm like, I'm a mindfulness guy. What am I doing spending this much time online? So I started working with it. And, and the only way you can work with it, it's like your bank account. The only way to know how to build your business profits is to know what your P&L is. Like what's your budget? It's the same kind of conversation. The only way you can decrease your social media is to have hard data on what your current usage is. So everyone, if you only have one takeaway from today's call, start tracking your usage so you know where your starting point is. All right. Can I ask a question? A question. Oh. Yeah, I, I heard two. Uh, oh, did okay. Becky, Becky uh, go ahead first. Okay. Um, well, I I totally relate to this. When I got on Twitter, I, I, I and I've told some of the groups. I mean, my, it was just consuming my day. At five hours or more a day, I, I was on social media, and it was affecting the business. You know. Yeah. Um, but I also. I've always learned, been taught, and I understand how valuable it is. Um, it's important to to um, speak with other people on social media, build those relationships because it's still networking. Yep. So, do you have a hard time doing that at, at the same time? Yeah. While, so while there's a couple. Back? There's a couple of tricks, and I don't have this in the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. One trick is go ahead and unfollow people. So oh, yeah, you want to yeah. retool your Facebook, your Instagram, your followers. And you can reset it so you're actually seeing the people you really want to hang out, the, the relationships you want to cultivate, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is a big tip that I, I just, it, it's so simple, but it's so funny. We go through and we scroll and we like things all the time. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. One out of a thousand business owners goes through the likes and actually sees who likes it and who from there should I cultivate a relationship. It's like, oh, 150 likes. Yeah. And then we do nothing with the data point. Oh, right. Right. right? So one is if you're getting lots of likes, see who's liking it. 
and start to build the relationships with the potential clients. The clients already like you and you're doing a lot with them. Now the other, if you, if you wanna build a relationship with someone, oftentimes there's an influencer that you wanna do some strategic alliances with. Just start commenting, like real comments, be a human being. Right. Notice what they're saying rather than a drive by, oh, that was great, right? Like really, just like face to face, start to deepen the relationship there. Now also don't friend people on LinkedIn that want, like you can tell right away the people that are wanting to friend you because they want you to pay them for their service. Right, right, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So from there, you start to set a timer. How much time are you going to give social media? And when that timer goes off, be done until tomorrow right because okay. it, it's just a never-ending cycle and you got to break the cycle that's you know probably 12 step 101 you got to break the cycle because you're in it so there were two questions who had a question there was oh that was person. me that was me diane i Hi, just diane. wanted to ask you about the iPhone, because I have one. And yeah. every Sunday, I think it pops up and says, here's your screen time for the last week. Yeah. I, I guess it's your daily screen time. That is everything you do on the iPhone. I mean, uh, you can you can retool the settings. So it shows you what you want with the data points that you want. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's in settings, I suppose. Yeah. I'll have to check that because I was always wondering about that because I do other things. I read books. I do all kinds of things. Yeah, and so there is a tab, like, let's say, Diane, uh, what is your business? Um, nutrition. Great, so um, what is the main channel that you use for uh, social media marketing? Mostly Facebook. Great, so there is a, a toggle that you can have just your Facebook screen time. Oh. And then you can be like, well, it takes an hour, five hours to read a book, whatever it is. And I'm like on Facebook for three hours. So just okay. starting to notice that that one data point. Before right. I move on, Dottie, did you have a question? I did. Thank you. Um, yeah. In your consideration of time spent, yeah. are you including things like um, creating whatever post you're going to create in say Canva or Spark or whatever no, tool you're using? You're not, not creating it. Are you actually just talking about commenting and liking and reading other people's stuff. I'm talking about being on the social media platform, right? So you do need time for admin, for creating Canva and creating your, your marketing materials, your promotional materials, you mm -hmm. need that. Yeah. But what I'm talking about is that's a creation mode. And the other stuff we end up slipping and there's a later slide I'll talk about, we slip into reaction mode. We're on autopilot, we're just reacting, 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 reacting. When you're on Canva and you're creating a new promo, you're mm -hmm. creating. Right. Yep. So that's different. It and is you're totally not different. Considering, like, if you go into later and you schedule all your posts out, you're not considering that either, right? Nope, I'm not considering that. But it would consider, like, say, if you did Facebook Live. That's right. Okay. Especially if I stay on the Facebook Live and I answer all the comments that came in. Okay. Right? That, that clears it up for me. Now, here's the thing. If you're doing a Facebook Live, that can be a really healthy thing because you're still creating the Facebook Live. Great. But then you're, you're already on Facebook and you're like, well, I'm already here and I just did a Facebook Live. Let me check out my other things. And then <laughs> like two hours goes by. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's what that I'm problem. talking about. Yeah. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now... How to use social media so it doesn't use you. We have some tips. I want you to start to consider which tip you're gonna take on. But I also want you to grow your business because that's why I'm here. I'm a business mentor. And, and if you're gonna be on social media, be on it for business. Because if you're not gonna be on social media for business, unless you don't have a strong local community, I recommend you just blow up your accounts. My wife, doesn't have any social media. I have a 17 year old daughter. She's chosen recently to blow up all her accounts. She doesn't have any social media. They're both much happier because of it. 
Now, because you have a business, it's important to have social media. The first thing is to ask yourself, are you doing the, the activities that are building like free sessions, educational talks, the networking events that I take the lead put on? Like, are you using your time valuably to build your business? And that's a question you have to start asking yourself, especially if the answer is you are on social media too much and you're not getting the ROI. If that is the case, switch the energy that you would normally just butter around and start to create some strategy. Now, to have the strategy, do you have a clear plan which prioritizes your business growth? And if the answer is no, you got to get one. Otherwise, your numbers, you're going to hit the same numbers you did or your business is going to start to decline. So this is what I said, you're either reacting or creating on social media, it's all how you see it. And this dawned on me one day when I was looking at the word creating and looking at the word reacting, and there's only one letter different in the word. So it, it, I think it's an anagram where it's the same letters and it's totally different meaning. Reacting is autopilot, just respond, re react, react, react. Creating is the creative juices of your business as an entrepreneur, what do you want to create? Now, I wanted to talk about creation because you should have a, a content creation system. And if you don't, I'm going to give you one today. The change your, your client makes, the value your client makes, the challenges your client makes, and the goals that they have. So we take a look and this is a client of mine. She's a chiropractor, an acupuncturist and a martial artist. And <clears throat> what change do you help your patients achieve? The mindset and knowledge that pain relief can come naturally. Now her whole specialty, it's Aria um, Pain Relief Center. And she knows that her patients want to get pain free naturally. Now, what are the values and beliefs of the people with whom you love to work? They're family oriented, they have an active lifestyle, they're generally liberal, they value time. What challenges do your patients face? They don't think they have enough time to exercise. They go to me as a practitioner or they really want self-care. What help does the patient need in relation to that goal? Guidance, quick tips, pain relief. So what we did is on Facebook, she went from no real plan to martial arts Mondays where every week she gave a pain relief martial art tip. Every Friday, pain-free Fridays. She gave another tip on Friday on Facebook Live. Now this all led to her Qigong classes online. Now she's a practitioner, but she recorded a series of Qigong lessons and she's now selling $1,000 worth of online classes that are already preloaded. So she's making $1,000 in revenue beyond everything without doing anything else. It's just the turnkey system at this point. Hmm. So I want to copy this and let me make sure that I have it in a format you can do it. It is restricted. So I'm gonna make it that anyone with this link can get this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to throw this down in the chat. Now, please follow directions. If you click that link and you make a copy, everybody here will have a copy. So you don't want to write in the document because then we'll all see like what you're writing and we can't all share the same document. So you gotta make a copy. Now, how do you make a copy of that? Get file, make copy. Yep. So what you do is you hit file and you make copy. So go ahead and do that now. As we're doing this, 
Here's another AI function. Now that I've made it public, all of these anonymous dodo heads are coming in and being like, ooh, something's being shared. What's being shared? I, I want to know. I want that. And they're probably grabbing it too. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. So now the last part of this is the content ideas based on the above intel. If you know what your clients want, if you know their values and beliefs, if you know what the challenges are, then you can help them. Oh, sorry. I want to change that to client. And for those that already copied oh, right. and pasted, yeah. you can change it to client. All right. So. We got about 10 minutes. I'm going to start lasering it in. The one, two, three from today. You got one or two ideas. Even if you were working on a spreadsheet on the side and you were only half year, there were one or two takeaways that you have. I, I implore you, as opposed to go pay for a bunch of stuff, start with taking on one of the tips that, that you have and start there. Another thing that I recommend is review, sorry, review where most of your business came from, your new business came from in the last six months. 10 years ago, I did a review where most of my coaching clients were coming from and I was blown away that it was from one realtor at Windermere. Oh, my really? top wow. source was one person. She was an I Take the Lead member. Her name was Dana. And I oh. can't remember her last name right now, but she worked yeah. for Windermere. Yeah, I know. Who to, yeah, And, I know who and she was sending me several people every month. Wow. And so what did I do? I started giving her appreciation and, and loyalty. So you can create a loyalty program if you don't have one already. Reach out to me if you want more health in your business and your life. Now, I do have a guaranteed service and it's a pivotal marketing plan because I think that a lot of people during COVID totally got hit. And if you find yourself in there, I'll spend an hour with you. I have a system. I find that it works well and it's guaranteed. So the cost of the service is $197. We spend an hour together and it's only, only cost you money if you found it successful or if you found that, that the time was worth your value. Now, I have a couple other links that I want to put into the chat, and then I'll open up the last five minutes for questions. One of the links that I have is if you're a well, like I heard that uh, Diane is a nutritionist. If you're a wellness provider or you have a wellness based business, I'm doing a free challenge, minimize your social media, maximize your business growth. It's a video day for five days. It's in my closed group. And uh, I do take outliers, but really I have a closed membership model that's growing fast. It's $25 a month and it comes with co-working sessions and a bunch of other stuff. But if you know a wellness provider, a business that is about wellness, they can get this for free to check me out. And I would highly, highly appreciate you taking one minute to share that with somebody. Now, if you're not in wellness, I have one more link that's gonna pop up in a second and it's just the pivotal marketing plan. And so <clears throat> questions, were there any other questions? Cause I love the, the Q and A. I wanna know more about MeWe and yeah. what is their business model? Uh, Miwi's how, business model is that they believe in, in altruism. So they do have a paid service where you can just pay them. They also have like a sticker service where if you pay them, you get emoticons. And um, they have big investors. And because they have 10 million users, they're not going away. But they were featured in the New York Times with like a code of ethics. And they had a, a whole spreadsheet on why they felt that selling your data was unethical. 
yeah, if you go to MeWe.com, I would encourage you just to subscribe. It's not going to cost you anything and then check it out. You also can have a, a, pers a, a business page on MeWe. And uh, that I think it costs $4.99 a month, $4.99 a month. Mm. Good to know. So for those of you that want a pivotal marketing plan, you can't mess with guaranteed because I just stand behind the services that I give. And uh, if, you're, if you're wanting to retool your business post COVID and you feel like you need a little bit more help, I highly recommend that you, uh, you check that out because I wanna spend some time with you. Although I work mostly with the healers and the wellness providers, I do love outliers and I've worked with previously real estate agents, bankers, financial sector, um, because I love small business. So Jason, I, I did see the social dilemma. I missed that at the beginning and yep. I would highly recommend it. It's, it really backs up a lot of what you're saying about <laughs> we get carried away and don't even realize it and how intense that becomes. It was so humbling when I started to look at my usage, what I was actually up to. And uh, it was embarrassing. Oh, the, the weird thing is that it was embarrassing, but it was probably less than the average, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, yeah. So you're not going to share how much? <laughs> not today. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> All right. We're at 356. I got time for one, maybe two more questions if you have them. If you're wanting any content strategy for your, your business, now's the time. I'm open uh, for any questions that you have for the next uh, three minutes. And I, I will be sharing the, the video with you, the replay sometime in the next 24 hours. I'll also go ahead and share um, Jason's links in case you didn't get it. Great. So, I have a yeah. question, Jason. Share the links with somebody if you think it might be helpful to them too. Yeah. Jason knows businesses. It's not, you know, he's, he's healthcare, but he knows all businesses. He's really good. So it's worth connecting with him. He can walk right through your business. Absolutely. Thanks, Len. Uh, I heard someone had a question. Dottie. Dottie, I have a yeah, question. Dottie. So in your um, social media experience, do you find you get better traction with video, with images, or with long text posts? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, it depends on what you mean by traction. ROI. Oh, on ROI, I do the best with actually my internal community and creating strategic alliances. And that usually happens through a, a DM or a PM. Okay. Yeah. I just spent, like I, I gave up Facebook ads a while ago, partly mm -hmm. because Facebook itself is a pretty unethical company when you look at the backside, like the ugly parts of it. Right. So I just spent $10 today for the this free uh, five day challenge and, and we'll see how it goes. Big spender, 10 bucks. <laughs> but $10 <laughs> actually, here's the thing. I, I've, I've, I've finessed it into the target market for both the U US and the UK. Oh, okay. And, and um, it's getting me an extra 300 views per day. Okay. Yeah. And when does it start? It started this morning. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So Tim... What do you do? I keep seeing you and then I'm curious. What do you do for a living? He's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy. Software developer. Mm. I uh, create custom applications for small business. Nice. And do you know about VPN and, and the rest of security? Not an expert. Yeah. And I probably should be using them. Yeah. So my recommendation is you already are 10 steps ahead of us. You should talk to Becky about doing a presentation on IT security and, and really uh, privacy, data privacy. Stop using Alexa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here, here's the weird thing. Yeah, if, if you're wondering, is this sci-fi or is this real? Your phone and your computer are listening to you and um, there are reverse cameras that can see what you're doing. So if you really want to start protecting yourself, you can just put a Band-Aid over, over your photo 
area um, to protect yourself. And this isn't conspiracy theory. This is like proven data points. And start spending less than 24 hours on social media. Yeah, that's a big one. So uh, we're right at time. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I'll share this view one more time. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just something else. Uh, These are my neighbors with horses that come right to my backyard. And uh, I moved outside of Portland a month and a half ago and, and I can't be happier. So if you did have a question and you're one of those introverts that was like, I really wanted to ask, but I can't share in front of other people, just go ahead and send me an email and I'll answer your question. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks for having me today. Well, thanks, thanks so Jason. much, Jason. We, we, thanks, Jason. You're a rock star. We really appreciate you. So <laughs> glad, glad you could be here. So yeah. So have Bye fun. Bye-bye.